Cette émission vous est présentée par CIH Banque. Mesdemoiselles, Mesdames, Messieurs, bonjour et bienvenue dans ce nouveau numéro de l'Hebdo des marchés. Au menu cette semaine, nous partons à la rencontre du management d'Atlas Capital, la banque d'affaires marocaine, nourrie des ambitions dans le corporate finance. L'un de ses associés nous en dira plus en première partie de cette émission. Et puis en deuxième partie, nous recevons Mustafa Adil qui est responsable de la finance islamique au sein de Thomson Reuters. Il était dernièrement au Maroc pour rencontrer les acteurs du marché. Il nous parlera notamment de la problématique des systèmes d'information dans le développement des banques participatives. A tout à l'heure. Un jour, j'ai essayé une nouvelle banque. Et ma vie a changé. Un jour, tout comme eux, vous découvrirez qu'on peut améliorer sa vie grâce à de nouvelles solutions simples et innovantes. La banque de demain dès aujourd'hui. Vendredi dernier, le management d'Atlas Capital a réuni la presse pour parler de ses ambitions dans le corporate finance. Atlas Capital qui vient de rejoindre un réseau international de banques d'affaires. Tarek Bretl, l'un de ses six associés, nous parle des ambitions du groupe sur ce segment de marché. On est réunis aujourd'hui pour une conférence de presse pour annoncer une excellente nouvelle pour Atlas Capital. Atlas Capital rejoint Oakland, la première banque d'affaires mid-market au monde, classée numéro 1 selon les classements Mergers Market. Et donc c'est une rupture pour Atlas Capital et nos clients qui vont pouvoir avoir un accès à des investisseurs, des repreneurs et des opportunités d'acquisition partout dans le monde. On a euh, eu la chance de participer aux plus importantes euh, opérations de M&A ces cinq dernières années, entre la, la session euh, du centre commercial Enfa Place euh, au fond euh, sud-africain euh, Delta Mara, ou encore euh, la session du groupe For Afrique euh, au fond ICAP, euh, ou encore l'acquisition la, de 50% du, du groupe euh, leader avicole Zalar. Le marché, nous, on, on, notre sentiment, c'est qu'il y a deux tendances de fond. Le premier, c'est que euh, les opérateurs qui cherchent à euh, céder euh, leurs entreprises ou leurs activités ont besoin euh, de mener des process internationaux, c'est-à-dire que de plus en plus, euh, des opérations sont transfrontalières qui impliquent des investisseurs, des repreneurs venant d'autres pays. Mais également, euh, lorsque euh, ces mêmes entreprises euh, cherchent à se développer à l'international euh, ou à se développer tout court, et cherchent de plus en plus à se développer à l'international, en Afrique notamment. Et, euh, et donc, euh, euh, pour nous, est, il est important de, de pouvoir s'adosser à une organisation telle que Oaklins qui a cette capacité d'exécution à un niveau mondial. Puisque aujourd'hui, Oaklins c'est 700 professionnels de la banque d'affaires répartis dans 60 bureaux dans les principales places financières de la planète. On le disait tout à l'heure, Mustafa Hadid, qui est responsable de la finance islamique au sein de Thomson Reuters, était dernièrement au Maroc. Mon collègue, M. Siwi, l'a interviewé pour Bourse News. So nice to meet you, Mr. Mustafa Adil. You're the head of participating finance at Thomson Reuters. Okay. And we have a few questions to ask you. The first is going to be, what are your expectations about the growth of the participating finance in Morocco? Thank you very much. Um, for Thomson Reuters, Morocco is one of the most exciting markets in the participative finance space. I mean, we've been watching this market since 2013, when the first announcement was made regarding the rollout of the finance. We were one of the first entities to do extensive primary research to see what the consumer demand was for that. And we found that there is overwhelming support and interest in adopting participative finance. And I think that over the last few years, the way the government has rolled out the regulations and the way that they have licensed a number of financial institutions and a number of participative finance windows is going to ensure that there is a broad depth in the market and the uh, products being offered and the coverage being offered through the utilization of the distribution channels is going to be very, very effective in ensuring that the needs of the local market are being addressed. So we are expecting there to be very fast growth, particularly in the first couple of years. We've seen similar 
uh, rollouts in markets like Oman, which followed similar standard, and we expect that within the next few years, participative finance will play a very significant role, taking up you know somewhere between five to ten percent of the overall uh, banking sector uh, size. So we're quite bullish and we're quite excited to see how the market develops. Nice, thank you. What is unique about the model being adopted in Morocco? So the model in Morocco is very, very interesting and um, you know we've not really seen it anywhere else. And there's a couple of particular areas where that interest comes in. One of them is the way that the Sharia board has been structured in Morocco. So Morocco has a centralized Sharia board that is completely independent from the financial institutions and completely independent from the central bank as well. It reports directly into the, uh, you know, separate authority, and its primary purpose is to make sure that the products that are being offered are in compliance with Sharia principles. Now, the issue with the industry globally has been that there has been accusations that, um, you know, Sharia scholars are not fully independent of financial institutions that are trying to push products through because they're on the payroll of these entities. They are in somehow influence, and that causes a lack of authenticity in terms of the reputation of the market. What we will see in Morocco is a truly independent Sharia board that is not linked to the business side in any way that will independently validate and verify the products that are being long. So I think you're going to have a lot more consumer confidence in the market. You're going to have a lot more consumer confidence in the products that are being offered. And I think it's going to be an excellent model. My expectation is that you know more and more markets are going to adopt this model of having the centralized Sharia board. Other markets are already talking about it, but no one has really taken it to the step that Morocco has. And I'm sure that in the future we will see other markets also copying this example to add that additional credibility into their domestic markets. Thank you. And what, do you th what role do you see financial providers play in this field? I think as uh, you know, financial information providers or you know, other providers, you know, other stakeholders, you know, we have a very you know, proactive role to play. I mean, the industry is literally starting from scratch. All these financial institutions, although they've partnered with some participative finance entities in other countries, you know, the model is very different and nobody really knows how that model is going to play out. So obviously, you know, you have the regulators playing a role and you have the financial institutions playing a role, but entities like Thomson Reuters and other entities that play a facilitative role in the industry will also uh, have a very important role and I think that you know the industry is going to look to us to provide the information that is required to provide the analysis and the data that is required for strategic decision making and also to help provide much of the connectivity that is missing. I mean whenever a new industry starts you know rather than everyone reinventing the wheel from scratch you want to have people learning from each other's experience you want to have you know knowledge transfer taking place because that will help the growth significantly rather than in isolated silos. So I think that you know Thomson Reuters or other financial providers like us will have a key role in these two areas in disseminating research that will be critical for decision making in the industry and for promoting connectivity among stakeholders to ensure that uh, the growth and development is unhindered. Thank you. Uh, the Minister of Finance is expected to, to issue the first Sokuk in 2017. How do you expect the Sokuk landscape to develop in the next few years? So Sakuk is a very, very interesting instrument and you know Morocco is a very interesting market for investors. I mean Thomson Reuters um, has been you know conducting a series of you know surveys with Sakuk issuers and investors and we have found consistently over the last few years that Morocco is always highlighted to the key market for investors. I think that uh, the transition is going to be slow and I think that makes sense at this point. I think what you will see is the Ministry of Finance issuing the first Sakuk this year. I believe that uh, subsequent to that you may see a few financial institutions issuing Sakuk and you may see some of the larger corporates potentially issuing the Sakuks. I think once that takes place you will have depth in the market. We expect the central bank to also issue short-term liquidity instruments in the structure of Sakuk to help uh, ease the liquidity constraints for the financial institutions that will have excess capital in the beginning. But I think that uh, over the next few years, you know, you're going to see a lot of depth in the market and you're going to see a very interesting mix of both domestic capital and international capital. You know, investors in other markets who see uh, Morocco as an ideal investment destination and the Sakuk structure as an ideal structure for them to invest 
in the uh, projects in the country in a safe and structured manner. So we're very optimistic that um, you know Sukuk is going to play a vital role, and you know globally we know that there is you know a gap between supply and demand of Sukuk. We know that there is excess demand in the market, and we know that Morocco has been highlighted by investors in other markets as being a core market that they're following. So my expectation is in the next two to three years, Morocco will be a major jurisdiction when it comes to Sukuk uh, space globally. Voilà, mesdames, messieurs, c'était tout pour ce numéro de l'hebdo des marchés. Il ne me reste plus qu'à vous souhaiter une excellente semaine. Ne l'oubliez pas, l'actualité se poursuit sur Bourse News. Quant à moi, je vous donne rendez-vous lundi prochain pour un nouveau numéro de l'hebdo des marchés. A bientôt. Cette émission vous a été présentée par CIH Bank.